All right, so returning to this, I'm refining some of the, the foreground elements. I'm gonna go ahead and crop the image. Not all the way necessarily, but a little bit closer to save memory. All right, and then save it. And now, I get to kind of decide how to fit everything together. And I still have one element. So I'm gonna make this cupcake an extreme foreground element. I want a little bit of that red showing through. So I'm gonna hit Command T. You can do this at any time. And I'm just gonna warp it a little bit, like so. Maybe tilt it. And now to sh get it to feel like it's more in our face, I'm gonna play with these adjustments. And I actually haven't done it to this element yet, but this time, I'm actually going to exaggerate not just the midtones, but the highlights and the shadows, because as something comes forward, it gets more contrasted. So the brights get brighter, the darks get darker. Color balance is going to be really important here. And I'm going to brighten it up. I'm going to add warmth to it. So in the midtones, I'm going to get a lot warmer. You see what the difference that makes. In the highlights, I'm going to get a lot warmer. And I'm really kind of doing the opposite of what I did in the background. So that it comes forward. I just wish the edges were a little sharper. But I might have to go in and, and fix that. And then when I go to hue saturation, this might be the case where I actually saturate it up a little bit, but not so much it blasts out instead of downplaying it, right? I'm actually increase the saturation just a tiny bit. And I don't like the toxicity of those sprinkles, so I can just shift the hue a little. That looks a little bit nicer. All right, now how can I clean up this edge? There's really no other way to do it Then to go in there with my two pixel feathering lasso and just cut away. What's nice is it's organic. It's not like I'm having to cut around the cables of a bridge. When you're doing that kind of thing, it's a little tougher. It just is. Now I try not to zoom in more than 200% when I'm doing this. And right now I'm only zoomed in. I'm not even at 100% because you don't want to be so perfectionist about it. That just isn't a good use of your time. So don't zoom in so much and you can see the percentage in the corner. So if I'm zoomed in at 300% and I'm using my lasso here, I'm like barely making any difference. And remember, we're just trying to learn these skills. We are not yet getting paid a lot of money for them. So just try to learn them the best you can without being a perfectionist about it. So I'm just going to find an edge for this top. Cut that down. And you can just have fun with it, like you were painting it yourself, even though we're using other people's pixels. Find your own edges. And then you can always use transform as well to kind of fit it together in a way you like more. And you only have to worry about what's in the boundaries of your planned sketch. Sometimes students get into cleaning their reference so thoroughly 
they're doing a lot more work than they actually need to do. So understand what's actually affecting your image. And my sketch ends there. So I don't really need to resolve what's underneath that. Even if I decide to move it down a little bit. All right, and then my last feature, I'm just gonna leave the barbecue leg bone out, is this lollipop. Now this one's tricky, because there's so many saturated colors, even in the background. But I can try with my magic wand to separate out that edge, hold down shift, add to that selection. Contiguous is checked with my magic wand. It's at, it's at only 12 tolerance, which just means I might have to be click a little bit more than I would need to if it were at the default 32, but I can work with that. Then I can delete, but that's gonna give me a really, really sharp kind of artificial edge. So then what I do is I select the empty space and I go to select and mask and I'm going to feather it and shift it, do all that stuff it remembers, and then bite away at it. You can see how effective that is at softening that selection. So it's nice and clean. There's just a few things it missed. So grab those. And then my lollipops, we don't really have time before the deadline to turn it in to do a, a thorough cleanup of every layer, but there might be little things I see. Like on these lollipops, this blue from the background still, that I can go in with my two feathered, two pixel feathered lasso and clean up. And there's all this stuff. This is the kind of digital detritus, the kind of mess that really sets amateurish work from professional work. It's just being detail oriented, just like you would in traditional artwork. especially when it comes time to print them for our portfolios, if this becomes one of your portfolio pieces. Then we really sweat the details. But very important to get our assignment turned in. Okay, I'm gonna show you a trick I don't usually show on this assignment because I need it. I need it on this layer. This is just way too blurry. It's just the photographs, right? And I want that to all be as sharp as possible. So I have a few options. I can try to make this sharper, but it's gonna look artificial. I would do that with what's called the sharpen tool. And I'll just show you how that looks. All it can do, because the computer is not good at making up information, all the sharpen tool can do is increase uh, edges that it finds, increases the contrast of edges. So look what that does. Doesn't make it look more believable as a cupcake, right? So instead of that, I'm just going to create my own arbitrary edge. So I'm just going to cut into it. Make my own edge. And if it was really bad, I could always composite something else into it. But that helps a lot. So remember, having overlap allows you then to make these kind of strong creative decisions about what to use and what not to use. And a problem with using food photography is often you have these depth of fields that are a problem. And then I can go to the other layers and I can cut away from those edges, the things I don't want. And I'm left with with this, right? Now, where do I actually want to compose it? My sketch was only went down to here. So I can use my cropping and kind of find the best composition I like. 
but I know I at least want to bring this up a little bit, maybe to there. And I might want to bring this top down a little bit. When you crop, it gives you what are called the rule of thirds lines. And it's good to have focal points where the third lines intersect. It's not good to have a focal point dead center. And so this feels pretty balanced as a composition. And so you can sometimes use cropping to make it a little bit stronger of a composition. All right, then I crop. And now I save my work as a PSD. I can hit command semicolon to, to get rid of my guides. Remember, my guides are there, but they're not going to show up in the image. They're just a tool within Photoshop. And now I'm just going to show you how to save it and put it up to Canvas. So I saved it as a PSD. I know that because when I go to File, Save out of Photoshop, the save is grayed out. Now I'm going to say Save as a Copy. And we're always going to save it to our computer, not to cloud documents. Right? That's just a backup you can do into your Adobe account if you want. But always first save it to your computer. And I'm going to save it as a JPEG because it fills the whole rectangle into assignment one or to my desktop. I'm going to go at the largest quality. And now I'm going to check that it's there in my folder. So I open up my folder, go to assignment one, and I see my PSD. And then I see my JPEG, which I'm going to march orange. I've already posted my sketch. These are the two requirements. So then I'm going to go to Canvas, and I'll help you guys with this. But we're at 1130, so it's time to submit whatever we've got, even if it's just our sketch to acknowledge the deadline. And we add to our, our post, if we've already posted something, by clicking on these three dots and saying edit. We don't make multiple posts. And then I'm going to put my final composite as of the deadline. So doesn't mean it can't be improved more, but this is what I'm going to turn in. If you have time, and I have time in this video, I'll just show you, you can do a final thing. I'm going to shrink it so it fits, makes it a lot easier to view them if you don't make them too huge, right? So you can see that's where we started today, and this is where we ended up. So adjusting the colors, using direct image adjustments, levels, color balance, hue saturation, and then layering things as they come forward to be stronger and stronger. All right, so here is the final thing you can kind of do that's fun. Once you have your JPEG, you can double click it on your Mac. It will open up in this program called Preview, which is just a free program on any Mac. And then you can go to Tools and Adjust Color. And this is like doing direct adjustments to the whole of the image, right? In a way that's safe because it's not going to hurt your PSD files. So I can click Auto Levels and see if it wants to balance the histogram in any way. And it didn't make much of a difference to mine. But I can also play with how strong the highlights are. You see how that can build more atmosphere into it? How strong the shadows are or how bright they are. I like them as dark as they are. And I can play with the color balance, the temperature overall, if it's cooler light, warmer light. So you can see how powerful these adjustment tools are. I can add kind of sepia tones to desaturate. And whether you like that or whether you like it originally, it's good to know that we can keep editing these. I also noticed that I have a little bit that's cut off right in that corner. You know, so little details mean that I'll want to come back to that and keep working on it, which is why I'm going to keep it yellow, but also mark as green. That means I finished it for the deadline, but yellow means I still want to work on it because that's my working format. All right? And then that's all we need to do for assignment one. Just make sure you put it in the right folder, you organize it, and then we're going to be ready for our next project. So I'm going to create a folder for assignment two. All right.